I will let us continue. This is the message, um, and perhaps it might be a series of um, <clears throat> messages on moderation and what the scriptures teach us. Now, for us as Aras Tafari, or those of us who say we accept the teachings of His Majesty, the moderation and what the scriptures teach us is very important. We can't be like those who are forever learning but never able to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. And here, where we was at, was about to move to um, <clears throat> uh, Second uh, Timothy, and we were speaking about if one to have the form of godliness, like we could have the form or the look of what is a godly look, you know, or our outer manner can appear godly. But if we lack <clears throat> or deny, and, and lack is one thing, but to deny the power. What is the power? The power is the word, and, and the word must become flesh. So we can be, as it says further, it says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive uh, a silly woman. And when it says silly woman, sisters, don't get offended by this. Because really, it's referring, in, in its ultimate sense, to the brethren, who, in a sense, are like silly women, who are led astray by every little twist. They, they don't have a firmness in what they um, believe or what they accept as true. And this is not even speaking about um, religion. This is just speaking about life. Because when we talk about religion and spirituality, these things originally wasn't written like in a book as we have it in the book. We have it in the book because we forgot. This is the reason why we have it in the book. And we have the book to remember. But not to, to gorge on the word and not to acknowledge or to comprehend or understand the context of it. This is why we, when we talk about Sabbath portions, you know, a, a reading and a feeding, a little reading and a feeding. You understand? Like when you eat. You don't just keep eating because there's food in front of you or because there's food there. If one does that, that's a disorder. <clears throat> and we are told that in our Father's house, it's not about disorder, but it's about order. And now, what is our Father's house? Don't you know that ye are the temple of the living God? And he says he will dwell in us. But we must prepare our hearts and our minds. And we must be able to digest the word, you know, to comprehend the word. This is why when it goes on further, it says, <clears throat> for of this sort are they which creep into houses. We're not here to creep into one's houses and to cause disorder between the male who may be in the teachings and may be um, inspired by these reasonings, Yovas, but maybe a little bit fanatical. And when we say fanatical, a little bit extreme. Because the King of Kings teaches us balance, balance and moderation. You know, it says better is a, the word says better is a morsel where there's love than, than a feast and hatred therein. So better is a little bit with love. Now, what is love? This is, this is the, some say the million dollar question. You know, if, if money is even worth a million dollars as a million dollars. But here's the, here's the real thing. What is love? Now, we are told that God is love. But many of us are still seeking love or seeking to be loved, seeking to be love of people. And what we don't recognize is that word that tells us that God is love. What we have not digested, what we have not assimilated is that into our consciousness. And sometimes, in addition to reading, there's meditation. And meditation don't mean sitting in the corner and just going, um, it doesn't mean, that's not just meditation. Meditation is both to think on it in the mind, to even mutter on it, like the word became flesh. You know, when you meditate, the word became flesh. Mm. I'm still thinking about it. I'm not saying about it. I'm like, the word became flesh. The word, the word became flesh. And as you meditate on it, it becomes clearer in your consciousness. But this does not mean that we neglect our other 
responsibilities and duties in life, and especially the family. Because for those of us who consider ourselves having um, lost family, even for the gospel's sake, it is not what everyone is called to do. It's not the situation everyone's in. Some folks are making their situation worse by their immaturity. And many of us as as youths, and there's many of you all out there who are youths in the Word, and who are very excited about what these teachings are are teaching and what the feedings are, are revealing. But one must remember moderation. You see, when it says... Um, let your moderation says garnetachu le so hulu itawak garnetachu. What is gar? Gar is to be tame, not to be wild, not to wild out. It's not for I and I to wild out or to be out of balance, out of proportion. You, you know what I'm saying? And um, I know there's a lot of sisters who have youth. And your youths, your children, the youths are your church. That's your church right there. You see what I'm saying? That's your church right there. Your church right there is your youths. You have that home church. You have those little ones growing up. So you have to grow up too. That means you have to mature. And one of the main keys is moderation. Garnet. Garnet is that moderation is that tameness, that discipline. And what the word moderation bespeaks of is that discipline. And when we talk about discipleship, discipleship is a, is a, is a personal, it's an inner, it's an inner, it's in the heart, it's in the mind, discipleship. That means you have to really look at yourself and you have to be honest before God the Almighty, you understand, and before man. But first and foremost, before the Almighty, in the sight and in the presence of Christ. And Christ is that word. And that word is not just these words we may speak, but that word is the logic. What is logical, what is illogical. And let me go on with this portion right here, because it says that they lead captive silly woman laden with sins. Sins. What are sins? Laden with all the shortcomings, all these things. When we talk about, there's a phrase that we use, heavily burdened souls. There's a lot of souls that are heavily burdened, brothers and sisters. A lot of souls are heavy, heavily burdened, you know. Um, things that they may have done in the past. Um, people they may have hurt. Things they can't change. Things they feel ashamed of. This is why we talk about spirituality, not just religion. See, religion is a, is, is a set of rules, a set of regulations, and that's important, but not unless they are really digested. You see what I'm saying? Until they are digested. One has to eat it. It's like you can't look at food and be starving and be fed. You have to eat it. And when you put it in your mouth, you have to chew it. You understand? And in chewing it, you have to break it down. You understand? And you have to keep chewing it. You understand? And break it. And you can't put more food in your mouth. You have to finish chewing what you already have in your mouth. It's like the word that you're meditating on. You know, I know many ones who like just they'll, they'll read, they'll gorge themselves with it. And then I ask them, okay, um, what was that about? Explain it to me. Hey, it's, oh, it's such a but they can't explain it. Why they can't? Because they didn't digest it. They, they haven't comprehended it. And this is what this teaching is about. That's why we're focusing on this key word of moderation. You understand? Of temperance. Of, of, of discipline. And we're trying to focus on logical, realistical application because family is very important. And I don't want you brothers or sisters especially to trouble yourself or to trouble your household because of um, an immature overzealousness. They say the best things in life take time. 
It even takes nine months on average in proper conditions for a new life to be once conceived, to be matured and to grow to that point of birth. It takes, it, 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 it's a balance. And here when it's talking about those who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. We don't want our ministry to be that which has a form of godliness but denies the power of the gospel, which is the good news, the power of the word, and to be able to focus on these realistic issues and to speak to people's heads and hearts and my brothers and sisters about the real things that affect our individuality, our, our I, the I, and I, and I. This is very, very important. This is why we're taking this time and opportunity. There's other things that we thought we wanted to teach on, but the Holy Spirit has us in a meditation on this point. And we said, you know, let's just keep it real. You know, let's just keep it real. Let's get into this word. Let's get into a moderation message of, of the need of moderation, of the need of temperance. But let's just finish the scripture right here where it says, For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive, silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. And here's the key, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, the real knowing, the real intimacy of the truth. It's not just bits and pieces of factoids, you know, bits and pieces of facts, but not really knowing the context or how they work together. Like when Christ says, he who does the will, will know the teachings. He who does the world. It doesn't mean that you have to read uh, a whole book, a whole, uh, or like a whole book in the Bible in one night and gorge yourself and don't even understand anything, any, any, any lesson in the Bible. You know, don't even say any lesson in that chapter because once you read a portion of the scripture, a chapter, the chapters are the rest parts. Take a pause. Meditate it. Take care of some other, some other things. It's not going to go, it's going to be, it's in you. If, if you read it with um, consciousness, the, the mind is amazing, brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? They say even things that we see on TV, on movies subliminally, you know what I'm saying? We pick up on these things, even things that we're not conscious of. We're we paying attention to the movie or TV show or cartoon or whatever we're reading. I mean, whatever we're watching, like we might be looking at what we're reading, but are we really paying attention? You know, saying not to gorge yourself on it. That's why it goes on to say, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Then it says, now as Janus and John Brace withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. So it's not really talking about women in that sense, but yet there are some sisters who might be like that, they are unstable. Unstable because of all the pain, the burden on their souls, on their consciousness. And we don't want to be a part of that problem, but to be a part, Jah willing, hopefully, of a solution to that by pointing ones in the right and the righteous direction. There's, a, there's, there's one other verse that uh, maybe two other verses that we want to touch on. We talked on moderation, and let us touch on temperance. You know, to really get into the, you know, there's a there's a sweet spirituality in the scripture, and unfortunately, many churches and church folks out there, um, they're still dealing with like a kindergarten level of this. You know, a kindergarten, the basic building blocks. But not even in the way where, like, if a child goes to kindergarten, if you have your child in kindergarten, and after kindergarten they don't even learn the ABCs, they may play, they may, you know, spend the day, but if they're not learning anything, you and you're paying your money for that, you know, and if you're investing, like, if you're watching these videos and you're investing your time in watching these videos, I hope and I pray that you are learning something from it. And some of what you are learning, you can apply 
in, in, in the real to your life. And that someone who is not even of I and I religion or of I and I spirituality can do what? They can say, yeah, I see a positive improvement in that person's life. I'm not all into what they're into, but I, I do see a, a goodness that, that I, I see good fruit in saying the good fruit. Family is, 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 is very, very important. Now, I'm talking about uh, um, the family that, that, that stays together. You know what I'm saying? Um, and hopefully the family that, that learns to pray together, but mainly the family that stays together. We have to start at where we're at and, and to hope and to pray and to have patience. Patience is another key. Patience is, a, is another key, you know. Um, temperance. It says in Galatians, let's go to Galatians 5.23. Now, I know we was in Galatians before with the, the Ledet reasoning, but what is it, 5 and uh, 23. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 23. We want to see a message on um, temperance. Galatians 5 and 23. Okay, we're in 5 and 23. And 5 and 23 says, um, it says, okay, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Is that the area of scripture where it says, we're trying to find the part, maybe it's temperate, temperance. It says, it says to add, to add something to knowledge because we be learning, but let's learn, learn it in the context. Because sometimes if we're not getting the results, that the word promises us that we are to get, it can be and usually is that something, it could be something minor, it could be something small, it could be even the way we are um, perceiving, you know what I'm saying? The way we are perceiving is, is um, it, oh, it was Second Peter, Second Peter one and six. Second Peter, my bad. I was reading it. Second Peter one and six. So let's go to Second Peter um um one and six. Okay, Second Peter chapter one verse six. Okay, chapter one verse six. It says and to knowledge temperance. Well, let's put this into context. It says, grace and verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jah, if you please, and of Jesus Getachin, according to his divine power, Melukotawi Chayil, hath given us I and I all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and to virtue. Now, we can get into um, some of the details here, but let's first just try to comprehend it in the form, in the form and in the version that's being presented to us. So here we're in Hulatenya Yepetro's uh, Melikut, Melikut, and um, this is the second um, uh, epistle, or uh, general, of Peter. And we're here in chapter 1, and we're beginning from verse uh, verse um, 2 and 3. Yemelikot tu haya begeza kubruna be Begoneta yet ranina be mawek, le hiwatina xiavi herina le memsella yemihono wina neger hulua sila seten. Be exiavi herna begetachin be yasusa oket sagana salam yib zalacho. He's saying, Grace and peace be, be multiplied. Grace. So see, when we speak about balance and moderation, it's also having a, 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 a graciousness and, 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 a, and a peacefulness. 
Now, see, this means that we really must ground ourselves both in the knowledge and in the practice, the act, the act, acknowledgement, acting on that knowledge. We say we know it. Now, if we know it and it's true, then there's no excuse if we don't act on it. You understand? Then we are definitely in error if we say it's true and we know it, but we don't act. And we have the ability to. Nothing prevents us besides our own stubbornness, besides our own um, willfulness. It goes on to say in verse uh, 4, it says, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. That means we have great and exceeding precious expectation, that which we look forward to in this life and the life to come. It's precious. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. In other words, by holding to these great and precious promises and expectation is also connected to the entirety, is connected to the knowledge, is connected to the life, is connected to the godliness, and it says, according to his what divine power has given us all things. He's given us all things according to what? So it says that they may have the what form of godliness, but they deny the power. Here it says, here it says, according to his divine power, has given us all things. So he has given us everything according to the divine power, so we need to connect with that divine power. You see? And we can only connect with that div divine power within. And as we submit ourselves and we and we make our wills obedient to his influences and if we're going to talk about this bible then we have to talk about this bible in its proper context this is one of the worst things is that this bible has been translated in so many ways but we can see that the majority of the ways that it's been translated obviously cannot be the way that it was intended otherwise the fruit of it would be different the fruit of it would be much, much different. You know, there's an aspect that God does. There's an aspect that Christ strengthens us to do. But there's also an aspect that we ourselves must do. Now, see, a khatiyat or a sin, a missing of the mark, it can be something that we do or something that we don't do. Now, we began off speaking about um, family. And we also want to connect this with relationship, in particular, the male and the female relationship. This is one of the reasons why we was going to share a message that um, we're putting out a call to um, the sisterin, the sisterin who, who qualify. When I say who qualify, those sisters who already have, say, youths and, and children, that's your church rate. Right? So, yes, please continue in the studies, continue in the building, but that is your church. It's like there are two classes, basically. It's like right now if we were in the land, there are those who are civilians, you know, those who are Salamawi, and those who are Weta Darawi, those who are militant. You see what I'm saying? In other words, we have certain duties for, for, for the home, the bait, and we have certain duties for the community and the nation. Right now in this ministry um, and in this course that we are in, this is our duty more so for the community and more so for the nation. You see? But it has come as a, at a loss, a personal loss to, to I. You understand? Um, I could almost say a triple-fold loss to I in the family and the youths who were lost. And we pray every day that in the Almighty's way that these things will be restored. Uh, um, and, and, and we know he is able. And sometimes it's just, it's just getting past our own um, littleness of faith. Yes. Even I and I, you know, when we start to say, well, I know he can do all things, but when you see certain things done and when you've experienced certain things, 
you almost feel like, I, I can't ask him for this. This is my fault. This is my problem. But in grace, we have that opportunity to pray if we will pray without doubting, without wavering. You see? And we have to access these 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 are means of grace. Therefore we can be more graceful, you understand, and show more moderation to all men. They said, let your moderation, let your tameness be known to all men. And then say just let your tameness be known among your brethren and sisterin, but to all. So you are a living testimony of the very truth or faith or religion or way or spirituality which you say that you confess. It's not that you just confess it, but your 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 nature, your 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 whole character is a testimony, becomes a living testimony. So even before you open your mouth, people know they they perceive that divine power working through you. But this requires balance, my brothers. This really requires balance. There's no need to um, justify ourselves. It's because of his son, Gaitachi Nam and Hanatachi Jesus Christos, and our faith and obedience to the gospel that we become righteous. We become rightly aligned. And it's not by our doing. This is the key. You understand? Know this is this is the key. And many of us still erroneously think that it's things that we do that's going to make us more righteous. Even if it's, I'm going to read the Bible every time, all the time. Okay, you can, you think it's about how much Bible you read? Or is it about how much you are able to digest and assimilate? That's what it's about, how much you're able to digest and, and act on. Because when you start to act on it, then you really are in the true spirituality of the King of Kings and his Christ. And this is the true and the faithful witness of Rastafari. Because if we look at our, our, the state of our nation, the state of the, the, the movement, it's almost like we have we have slipped into some sort of an inertia. And instead of saying the Rastafari movement, it's almost, in some ways, the Rastafari inertia. And we have to get forward, move forward, once again in the movement. But it requires a particular alignment of our heads and our hearts, our hearts and our minds, my brothers and sisters. So here it says, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, through lust does not mean that you and your wife, you and your husband, you and your, 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 your spouse, your partner, does not enjoy the the fruits of each other. You see, because there's, there's some there's some twisted there's some twisted sick stuff out there that many believe. Not so much because they've made it up, but it's what certain elements in the world and society tells them, and without them really scrutinizing and thinking for themselves. They believe this is so. And I am afraid and concerned that some might have even attributed perhaps to this ministry, to Lion of Judah, certain things that we have never preached or taught or even said. But they're unsaved or people who are not part of this uh, spirituality or this this, this um consciousness might think so because you, the I of them, are giving them the wrong impression. So therefore, you're not only letting yourself down, but you're letting the Almighty down and I and I. Brothers, and this is why, once again, bringing it back to the top, 
moderation. Moderation is the key. But here it tells us, and besides this, and in addition to escaping the, the lust of the world, how we used to be out there going to clubs, partying, doing all, a lot of stuff that people even now are doing in a more technological way. But it's the same old, same old, probably been going back since B.C. days. But it says, and besides this, giving all diligence, that means being diligent, you know, being on point, add, it says, to your faith, virtue. So it here is telling us, and besides this, right, it's telling us, and besides this, silazihim mikniyat, and because of and because of this uh, reason, tagatin hulu ia sayachu. In other words, um, y'all showing it the imnetachu in your faith or through your faith that go in that tin um, charitableness, generosity. Now, charity, the godnet, and what's called virtue, or we can say charity, bamarinya, is not just financial, you know, a kind word, a loving word, not just to strange people, but to those family members who might not be Rastafari conscious. They already think something is strange with you, and a lot of you are just reinforced it by by your strange um, behavior. Almost like when the Bible says, like one's acting like I'm holier than thou. Stand thou thence, don't come near I. I am holier than thou, and we're estranging from us others who might still be like we were a week before we got on fire or a month before we got all fiery for this. You, you know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? So here it goes on to say, it says, and add to your faith virtue. So to our faith add virtue. And to virtue add knowledge. Now here's the key in verse 6. It says, and to knowledge temperance. Temperance. Note that key word, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness, resembling God, resembling Jah. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. And charity here is very interesting, even in the King James Bible, is love. Charity is, charity is love. So it's saying that... And giving all diligence, you understand, while we show in your faith, in your, in your subjective um, walking out of the vision you have of the objective. So what Christ, Jesus, what the word and the truth, the logic, the logo teaches us, that is the objective aspect. That's the object of faith. Because we have faith in him. And the key with him is the word. This is the key. The key is the word because within the word is the logic. And what we meditate in our hearts and in our minds is that word. That's what we're seeking to digest. That's what we're seeking to assimilate. So it says, Bem Natachu. In other words, one can say generosity. You understand? Know Add generosity to faithfulness. Because, you see, most folks are, in this world, are greedy. Most folks are um, not generous. Bego. Bego in that can also mean goodness in the sense of a, a, a generosity or a type of a charitableness. And and as we said, these things are not just money things. Because some people think the only thing they can do is to give money. Money does not buy um, love. And, you know, a lot of us, many of us at one point or another have spent our lives or portion of our lives 
looking for love or being very ill set because we feel we lack love, even though there may be folks around us who love us, but we don't see that. Maybe we're looking at someone else over here or someone else, something else over there. But I think what we're not looking at and what we're not seeing is Jesus Christos. We're not seeing him in the context, not just he is woolly-haired, not just that he is black of complexion. Okay, that's the physical, basic. Okay, we got that. But what about the, the mind of Christ? What about the spirit? What about the spiritual aspects of our being? And here in the scripture, there's a breakdown here, which will be going at Tim Oak at Tim, and to and to our generosity knowledge, so we can have a sense of even one can say a discernment by Oak at Tim Rasin Megzad, and with knowledge, knows that word Rasin Megzad, self restraint. That's that's the word temperance right there. In the words, um, temperance to temperance, it says patience but firmness, that we will be firm because we are fully convicted, fully convinced of the truth. Therefore, why should we even entertain any wavering or any doubt? Memsel. And and um, in in uh, firmness, godliness, and to godliness or resembling the the um the character of our Heavenly Father. And the, and the resemblance of that character is not just a, a physical, like, a, like a, 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 a form, an outward form of it, but it's the inward character, the inward renewal of our heart and our mind. And last it says, um, brotherly kindness or brotherly love, and in brotherly love, add love. Now, that's interesting. In brotherly love, or brotherly, um, um, and, and loving the brotherhood, it says fikrin. Now, fikrin is another word for God as well. I mean, another word for love as well, fikrin. Now, fikrin, fikr, it is a higher aspect of love. And I think this is one of the problems in this modern world. First of all, that love hasn't really been defined. You know what I mean? That love, in that sense, hasn't been defined. We haven't really defined what um, love really is from what love really is not. And First Corinthians chapter 13. Now, when you read that chapter, it's going to have the word charity, like right here in um, 2 Peter 1 and, um, 1 and 7. It also has the word in the, in the King James, charity. Now, that word is, is love. Now, the reason why I touch on this, because it says, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of Gaetai Jesus Christos. It didn't say one thing, really, about um, so much reading the Bible, though we know that's a part of it. But it says that there's a certain character. This is what's very interesting, that there's a certain character, should we say, a certain character that needs to be um, developed. Uh, uh, and, and here's when his message is about discipline of the mind. Discipline of the mind means that, all right, I want to deal with this a little more, but I got to balance. It's like with the Sabbath. Some people talk about keeping the Sabbath, but if you are not actively working, because the, the Sabbath says 
Six days shalt thou work. Didn't you get it? Six days shalt thou work. We can say that's the commandment right there, that six days, or we say five days in this modern work week, even better if you can get it. Five days, you know, or those, in other words, work these days in the week. In other words, occupy yourself with some occupational labor, you know, some activity, some progressive, productive activity, so that when the Shabbat come or the Senbet, it is almost natural, you know, or, or it becomes a part of, remember, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So we need to readjust the way that we think about these things. It's another aspect that one other aspect I like to share and I might put this in another um in another video. I think I probably would do it for another video and just seal up this particular um reasoning and hopefully we'll be able to get it out before um you know before the Shabbat comes in because we think it's a very important message on moderation. Garnetachu Leso Hulu. Yeah, tower.